What happens when superheroes become the real villains? Enters The Boys, the show that's shattering the superhero genre and exposing the dark truth behind the capes. And trust me, it's something you won't want to miss. But before we begin, my name is Mr. Scape, and if you enjoyed this video, it would be greatly appreciated if you liked and subscribed. The Formulaic Flaws Let's face it, major players like DC and especially the Marvel Cinematic Universe after Endgame have become a predictable, formulaic machine, spectacle over substance, flashy effects over meaningful storytelling. It's all become so hollow. Each new release feels like a rehash of the last, with heroes following the same tired arcs and villains who are just as one-dimensional. The magic, the tension, the excitement, it's all fading. Post-Endgame, Marvel's movies have increasingly leaned on the same tired formula. A charismatic hero with a minor flaw faces an over-the-top villain, resulting in a series of high-stakes battles and quippy one-liners. It's a rinse-and-repeat process that has drained the vibrancy out of the franchise. The heroes, once dynamic and relatable, now feels like caricatures of their former selves, stuck in perpetual cycles of self-discovery that no longer resonate. Gone are the days of complex antagonists like Thanos, whose motivation sparked endless debates. Instead, we're left with one-dimensional foes whose sole purpose is to serve as punching bags for our heroes. Enter The Boys Then, in 2019, The Boys burst onto the scene, and everything changed. It appeared to be the one of the most watched show, with 10.6 billion minutes views, even surpassing the rings of power. This wasn't just another superhero show, it was a brutally honest examination of what a world with superpowers would really look like. And let me tell you, it wasn't pretty. Corruption, abuse, murder. These heroes weren't the saviors we grew up idolizing. They were flawed, dangerous, and deeply human. In the boys, superheroes or soups were not noble protectors, but fallible, often malevolent beings. Their powers corrupted them, leading to heinous acts that were swept under the rug by Vought International, the supreme corporation that managed their public personas. Vought wasn't just a fictional entity, it's a ferocious story for the real-world corporations we know all too well. Those that wield immense power and influence, often at the expense of truth and justice. The boys didn't just introduce us to a new type of superhero, it held up a mirror to our society and dared us to confront the reflection. The show challenged the glorified image of superheroes, exposing their darkest impulses and the systematic corruption that shielded them. Enter Homelander, a twisted, terrifying take on Superman. He's not just evil for the sake of being evil, he's a product of trauma, isolation and a desperate need for love. Raised in a lab, deprived of a normal childhood, Homelander's psyche is a volatile mix of arrogance and insecurity. He's complex, unpredictable, and utterly captivating. Unlike the cookie-cutter villains of the MCU, Homelander's darkness is rooted in something real, something that makes him both horrifying and tragically human. His need for love and validation clashes violently with his godlike powers, making him one of the most compelling characters on television. With The Boys, we aren't just given villains to hate, we're presented with deeply flawed characters who reflect the complexities of human nature. This depth is what sets The Boys apart, making it a groundbreaking entry into the superhero genre and a stark contrast to the formulaic narratives we've grown accustomed to. Satire that cuts deep The Boys excels not just in its character development, but in its biting satire of modern superheroes and the world we live in. Remember the infamous all-female scene in Endgame? It was meant to be empowering, but came off as pandering and laughably obvious. The boys didn't hold back, parodying it without changing a single thing. Because it was already ridiculous enough, the scene in question was a prime example of Marvel's attempt to appear progressive while delivering a hollow gesture. It was meant to showcase female empowerment, but its forced and contrived nature was immediately mocked. The boys took this moment and mirrored it perfectly, emphasizing how corporations use token gestures to pander to audiences without delivering genuine representation or meaningful narratives. But the satire doesn't stop at Marvel. The boys takes aim at the very corporations that pretend to champion social causes while exploiting them for profit. 
Vought's facade of inclusivity and political correctness hides a dark, rotten core, a reflection of real-world hypocrisy. Take the scene where Homelander forces Queen Maeve to come out as bisexual on live TV. It's not just a plot point, it's a ferocious commentary on how companies use identity politics for their own game. This scene isn't merely for shock value, it underscores the way real corporations manipulate social issues for profit. For example, a study by CMO Council found that companies were exploiting social issues for marketing purposes. This is exactly what Vault does in The Boys. They use Maeve's identity as a marketing tool to enhance their image without any genuine concern for their well-being. Disney itself isn't immune to such criticisms. Despite their public stance on inclusivity, they've faced backlash for editing out scenes with LGBTQ for releases in certain countries to appease local censorship laws. This duality is mirrored in The Boys, where Vought's public persona is squeaky clean, but their private actions are quite the opposite. The Boys bring these uncomfortable truths to light, revealing how corporate virtue signaling is often just a cover for deeper systemic issues. It's raw, it's real, and it's something Marvel has never dared to touch. This fearless approach to satire is part of what sets The Boys apart and makes it a powerful commentary on our current societal landscape. A narrative that defies expectation. In Marvel's world, the heroes always win. The journey is familiar, the outcome is guaranteed. There's comfort in predictability, sure, but it comes at the cost of true engagement. Marvel's heroes face challenges, but we know they'll emerge victorious, often without any lasting consequences. It's a cycle that's become all too familiar, leaving audiences craving something more. But the boys? It's a world where nothing is certain. The boys often lose. They don't have superpowers or endless resources. They're just ordinary people fighting a system stacked against them. Their victories, when they come, are hard-earned and meaningful. The tension is real because the stakes are real. Take Huey, for example. He's no superhero. He's just a guy who lost his girlfriend in a gruesome accident caused by a reckless superhero. His journey isn't about discovering hidden powers, but about grappling with trauma and seeking justice in a world where the powerful are untouchable. This human element, this raw vulnerability, sets the boys apart. This unpredictability makes every episode a roller coaster. You're not just watching a show, you're on the edge of your seat wondering what's going to happen next. The stakes are high, the outcome's uncertain. In Season 2, for instance, the character of Stormfront was introduced as a seemingly charming new hero but was soon revealed to be a racist and a Nazi, adding layers of complexity and shock to the narrative. Such twists keep the audience genuinely engaged. And the numbers back it up. The Boys has consistently high ratings, with an 8.7 on IMDb. In contrast, recent Marvel shows like Falcon and Winter Soldier and Hawkeye have struggled to maintain the same level of viewer engagement and critical acclaim, often criticized for their formulaic approaches and lack of depth. The Boys' narrative complexity and emotional depth make it a standout in a genre oversaturated with predictability. It's not just about who punches harder or who has the best one-liners. It's about real people facing real dilemmas in a world that's all too recognizable. This is something the MCU hasn't delivered in years. The future of the superhero genre. The Boys has shown us what the superhero genre can be. Complex, dark, and deeply reflective of our world. It's a breath of fresh air in a landscape that was becoming stale and predictable. As Marvel struggles to find its footing, the Boys continues to rise, offering us a vision of superheroes that's both brutally honest and incredibly engaging. Since its debut in 2019, The Boys has garnered critical acclaim and a massive following. Its Rotten Tomatoes score sits at an impressive 90%, with audiences praising its bold storytelling and unflinching social commentary. The Boys' realistic portrayal of superhuman corruption and the impact of corporate greed has struck a chord, making it a standout in the genre. Meanwhile, Marvel's post-Endgame era has seen a significant drop in audience engagement. Films like Shang-Chi and The Legend of the Ten Rings and Eternals struggled at the box office, with Eternals barely breaking even against its production budget. The recent Ant-Man and Wasp Quantumania failed to capture the magic of its predecessors, reinforcing the notion that Marvel's formula might be losing its charm. 
The Boys offers a stark contrast with its unpredictable narratives and morally complex characters. It dares to ask hard questions about power, ethics, and the true cost of heroism. Questions that Marvel often skirts around in favor of lighter, more marketable content. This willingness to dive deep into the darker side of superhuman existence is what sets the boys apart and propels the genre forward. If you're tired of the same old superhero stories, if you crave something with real substance and stakes, then The Boys is your answer. And if you want to see more deep dives like this, make sure to hit that subscribe button and join the discussion, because the superhero genre is changing and we're here to uncover every twist and turn. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to leave a like, comment and subscribe.